In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how you can create this quite decorative piece using a couple of the modules that are available to ArtCam Express. And I'm also going to show you how you can use the VBIT carving to actually produce this. So here you can see the finished piece. It looks quite detailed, but I'm going to do this very, very easily. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go to File and I'm going to select Close Model. And this takes me to the Artcam Express startup screen. Now if you take a look on the far right hand side of the screen, you can see that I have a couple of the modules installed for Artcam Express. So this is the basic version of Artcam Express plus the bitmap layers module and the vector tools module. And I'm going to show you what these two modules actually do and how they can help me when I'm using the basic version of Artcam Express. So first thing that I'm going to do is go to file and then new model. And I'm going to set up a job or a model that is 300 millimeters in width 300 millimeters in height and a thickness of 10 millimeters. Now I can change that to inches here if I wanted to. I can also change the datum or the origin by selecting one of the four corners or selecting in the middle. So I'm just going to select OK for that and it's going to set up my model or my sheet that is 300 by 300. Now, if I take a look under the project tree, under the far right hand side, you can see I have these two icons. Now, these are only shown when you have the appropriate modules installed. So, for instance, I have vector tools installed, so that gives me vector layers. So, I can create lines and then assign them to different layers and turn them on and off. I also have bitmap layers, so that allows me to import more than one image and I can switch between the different views of that image. So I can just hide and show various images. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to load a bitmap. Now if you've seen demonstrations before, you have seen me bringing in images by either going to file and then open or by just dragging the images into ArtCam or even just copying and pasting them into ArtCam. Now this is another way that you can bring in images into ArtCam. I'm going to right click on the bitmaps here and I'm going to select import. And I'm going to import this vine here for the first image. So I'm going to select open and you can see that that's imported this image. Now if I wanted to go back to the original bitmap layer I could switch there like so. Now what I'm going to do is to get ArtCam to vectorize this or to trace around this to create some lines and curves very quickly. Now the way that I do this is to select the bitmap to vector tool and what I need to do first of all is reduce colors. Now if you take a look down the bottom here, you have lots of different colors within this image. So even though it's just a black and a white image, there are lots of different shades of blacks and grays in there. So what I need to do is reduce this down so ArtCam knows which color to trace around. So there you can see I've brought it down to two colors. I'm going to select the black as the main color, the primary color, and I'm going to select create vectors. And then I can turn that off. Now, if I drop the contrast slider bar down, just zoom in, you can see that it's not following all of the pixelation. So it's giving me a nice smooth curve following the image. And it's not giving me all of this jaggedness. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to just switch back to the original bitmap layer so it doesn't show the vine 
layer and I'm going to move all of these vectors to a completely new vector layer so I can use them later and I can just turn this layer off. So what I'm going to do is right click on those and select move vectors to and I'm going to select to move them to a new layer and you can see the top right here that it's created a new layer called vector layer 2 so I'm going to rename that by right clicking selecting rename and I'm going to call that vine 1 and I'm also going to select this black round button here and that opens up a color palette for me so I can change the color of this so I'm going to turn it to red and if I deselect that now you can see that all of the vectors have turned to this red color and then what I can do is to turn this off by selecting the light bulb and it will choose to not show the vectors or to show the vectors so I'm going to turn those vectors off and I'm going to load in a new image so if I select to import and I'm going to go to vine number two and select open now if I zoom in on this image you can see that there's a few more colors within this so I've got this black color and I've also got the red color now I'm going to do exactly the same thing with this create a bitmap to vector and I'm going to reduce the colors but this time what I'm going to do is to bring this down I could bring it down to two colors and it will automatically create or turn all of those colors into the one color but what I'm going to do is bring this up to four colors just to show you what you can do if all of the colors don't wash out correctly or don't merge into the one color correctly so I'm going to select OK and what you can do with this is if you select say let's say the red color here right click on that so it becomes the secondary color and just select this button just here that will link both of those together so I get this line that's basically saying that all of the red color has been turned into the primary color and I can right click on this lighter color here do the same thing with that and it will turn all of those colors into the primary color and then I can do exactly the same thing again and create the vectors so if I just drop that down zoom in here you can see again I've got some really nice vectors and I'm not going to edit these I'm going to machine these straight off so if I zoom out and I'm going to go back to the original bitmap layer like so now I can also switch between the images if I just move this out of the way here I can just switch between the various images so I don't need to keep on loading these back in or exporting the vectors out once I've created them like I would normally do right so what I'm going to do is to send all of these vectors to a new layer as well and I'm going to rename this vine 2 and I'm going to change the color of that also to blue you can see I can turn that on and off I can turn the original one on or off and what I'm going to do with this is to just select that and then I'm going to move that to the top left of the screen like so and what I'm going to do with this is to create multiple copies of this and I'm going to do this by using the mirror objects tool I'm going to do this across the model so it creates a copy across the model and I'm going to select all of the vectors and do this over the model as well and you can see that it's created this nice pattern now if I zoom in here for instance you can see that I've got all of these crossings and I've got a lot of intersections now the v-bit carving is not going to be able to machine this because it don't it would not want know where to go because of the intersections 
Now you need to make sure that you've not got any intersections in your vector artwork when you're creating it. So an easy way that I can sort this out is if I select all of the parts, just press shift and select. Now I'll select that, select that. Now you can see that I'm just selecting these parts around the outside. I don't want to select the inside here. And what I'm going to do is use a tool called the World Vectors tool. Now what this will do, it will automatically trim off those intersections for me. So if I select that, you can see it's automatically trimmed off the intersections here. Now I'm going to turn on the original vine layer turn off the other layer and I'm going to resize this so let's open the transform tool and I'm going to press alt on the keyboard and then resize that to around about 75 millimeters let's say and I'm just going to rotate this around so it's almost horizontal like so now what I'm going to do is just turn on the vine too, just so I've got some idea of where the frame for this is. And I'm going to press Alt on the keyboard and then just move that to the side, like so. And you can see that that's created the vector in that, that position as shown. What I'm going to do with this is create a lot of copies of this going round, so rotating. So if I select that, and I'm going to use the block copy rotate tool. And I'm going to do a rotate copy about the origin, which is zero, zero. I'm going to do it 360 degrees, and I'm going to do 15 objects and select apply. You can see that that's created all of these copies. Now you can see in the middle that it looks a little bit of a mess. I need to sort this out. I'm going to use the weld vectors tool to do this. Now, if I were to trim this off manually, this would take a very, very long time. As you can see, there's quite a lot in there. So there you can see that's welded all of the vectors together. Now, what I need to do with this is to have a vector on the inside here, because what's going to happen is that the V-bit tool is trying to, going to try and machine this area on the inside because it's all open. And what's going to happen is the V-bit's going to get down as far as it can. So this is more than likely going to go right the way through the material. So what I need to do is constrain this. And the way that I can do that is to just create a circle. But the first thing that I'm going to do is to just center this. So I'm going to right click on volume one and click to select all vectors. And then I'm going to center that and create a circle. And I'm going to do this on the center point. It will automatically slap, snap to that. And I'm just going to bring this out like so. You can see that I've created this circle. Now, if I take a look here, what's going to happen is that the V tool is only going to come around here. It's not going to try and get on the inside of this circle. So that's quite important to do that. Right, so that's all of the design completed what i'm going to do now is to create some toolpaths i can do that by selecting toolpaths and i'm going to create a v-bit carving toolpath now the vector association is basically what's going to be machined now i could go around selecting all of this it's quite hard to do the inside i could right click and select all vectors or I could just draw a box around this, but you can see that I've picked up some other pieces here. Maybe I've got lots of these vectors all over the page. It's a bit hard to actually select them. Good thing with the vector tools module is that I can assign the tool paths to a vector layer. So I can just select quite quickly Vine 1, and this is going to machine all of these vectors within here. I'm going to choose a carving tool and I'm going to select a 32mm 90 degree V-bit and I'm going to refresh the width and depth of cut information so this is basically going to tell me 
the depth that this is going to get down to. So it's almost four millimeters. Now I know that my material that I set up was 10 millimeters, so I know that I'm going to be okay. So I select calculate now, and this is going to calculate the tool path for this. So that's calculated the tool path. What I can do now is to close that and I'm going to calculate another toolpath. So create another VB carving toolpath. This time I'm going to use Vine 2, which is the outside, and I'm going to use a different tool for this. So let's use 120 degree VB this time. And then I'm going to select refresh just to see the maximum depth that this is going to cut. So that's okay, 2.355. And then I'm going to select calculate now. So that's calculated all of the toolpaths. Close that. Now if I zoom in, you can see the toolpaths in red. So if you want to see those, you can see them all in red on the center there. Right, so what I'm going to do now is right click on the toolpaths. If you select here, you can open up the toolpath so you can see what you have calculated. I'm going to right click and simulate all toolpaths. This is going to give me a simulation. Now, at the moment, this is in black. This is because I've got this depth color selected. So if I select apply, this is the normal simulation that you would see. So you can see quite a nice intricate piece that I've done here. And this is done relatively easy, very quickly. And what I'm going to do is change the material color. So have lots of materials in here. I'm going to change it to blue wax and I'm going to add a depth color and select apply. So that basically adds whatever color is the primary color. So I can change that here like so. And I can also add a different color if I wanted to, let's say this gray color and I can change it to that color like so. Now, if I wanted to send this to my CNC machine for machining, if I select toolpaths and then select to save toolpaths, you can see that I've got both of my toolpaths here. Now, if I had a tool changer, I just need to make sure that I've got the tool numbers assigned exactly the same as on my tool changer. If I have a single headed machine, I need to send these to the machine separately. So I need to save the toolpaths to separate files. I can also append the toolpath details to the file name. So it shows me all of this information on the file name that's outputted. I'm going to select browse and I'm going to find the folder that I'm working in, which is there. And I'm going to call this vbit and then select open. And then under the machine file format, you can see all of the post processors available to ArtCam. Now these are all available within all of the versions of ArtCam. So there are well over 200 posts within here. Now a post processor is basically sort of a converter. It converts the information from ArtCam into a language that your machine will understand and it can machine the material. Now, if you're unsure whether your machine is supported or is in this list, what you can do is download the trial version, install this on your computer, go through the tutorials, and you can actually machine the tutorials and you can see whether it works on your machine before you buy the program. So we also have a genetic G code. So here you can have, see we have genetic G code arcs there so this may run your machine also so if i select save switch to the folder and you can see that i have these toolpaths here and this is g code just to open this up showing all of the coordinates that it's going to move the machine to so it cuts that piece so that brings an end to the demonstration i hope that you found it useful thank you for watching Hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.